On my story today, we bring you Pastor Moses Grace Philobu, who explicitly took us through his upbringing, determination and challenges, how we pull through with faith in God. Please stay tuned as his story will not only inspire you, but ignite your faith in God. Just so no be lies, it's Zima Paul, they call me a free business logistics man. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. And this is my story. What can I do for my country? A very tough question to ask. A very tough question to get answers from. Especially if you're met with so many challenges and responsibilities. But when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. They don't give up. They emerge with unquantified and unique experiences. I remember I had about six friends and I can tell you that all of them could not make it out of secondary school. We all got pregnant. My first time going to Benin, I had to wrap the clothes tied on my neck. No even trouser, no even shoes. I eventually into this business, not because I really want, but because of the economic situation in Nigeria. These stories will not only captivate you, but inspire you to forge and succeed. So, join us on My Story, a program designed to inspire you to succeed. Reverend Moses Gracefield Ogbu Uche, and I am from Benue State of Nigeria. I am uh, Igede by tribe from Obinoko government. And uh, my parents were missionaries. My father is late now. He served with the Assemblies of God. My mother also is a pastor with them, Reverend Joseph Uche Ogbu and Reverend Mrs. Esther Ogbu. They are my parents. And growing up, we grew up in the missionary field, and I can say that life was very tough. We had to learn how to adapt to so many things. And one of the interesting things about my growing up age is that we moved around a lot. And because we moved around a lot, I have the, the privilege of interacting with people from different cultures, from different parts of the country. I can speak many languages in Nigeria, and I feel very comfortable in the midst of people from all over the country. I lost my father when I was still in the university and I had to take over the, the responsibility of taking care of the family and it was hard, it was difficult, it was very tough but I stuck to it by the mercy and by the help of God. I remember there was a time when I, I had nothing. I had to actually go to the stream for me to take my bath. I had to go to the bush for me to ease myself. I had only one trouser. And that trouser was so perforated that sometimes I would give it to my assistant pastor, ask him to go and repair it. One of those days, the tailor look at him and say, when your pastor is sending this trouser next time, tell him not to send money anymore because I'm willing to be doing it for free. When they repair it, they will bring it away, it, it, will, it, will, it will break again. Because like Jesus said, you can't put a piece of a new cloth on an old cloth, the two of them will be damaged. It was just like that life was so hard and difficult. I had, I had no accommodation, I had slept outside, I had not, no roof over my head, especially that was when there was a demolition in Abuja. The next accommodation I got, it was so terrible that I'll be sleeping, rats will be eating my fingers and eating my toes. <laughs> when the rain is falling, I will look for all the plates in the house and all the, all the containers in the house to put on top of the bed because that was the only place I was just trying to secure. The rest of the, of the house would just look as if I'm, I'm in a gutter. It was so terrible, so horrible. And sometimes 
it, 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 I'll just be praying, oh God, let the rain not fall today. But the rain will definitely fall because it's this season. It is just as bad as that. But I, I went through it, I endured it. it. It was a place that I recently I went there and I saw the place. I was just wondering. So I lived here before. I took a picture of it so that I can show some people in the future. And looking at where I'm living currently, I live in one of the best accommodation in the, in the whole of this environment by the mercies of God. I was just wondering, so somebody could live in that kind of a dilapidated structure and even homeless before, and God has blessed you in several ways now that you are comfortable in life. I, I, I want you to know that anybody who is going through such thing, it, that is not the end of your life. Another challenge that I had to overcome was I had a stroke. I was exposed to people who also have a workaholic culture and it, 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 they tend to make you feel that if you're, not, if you're not working 18 hours in a the day, then it's not right. I, I wasn't eating right, I was always fasting, always praying for people. Sometimes I could preach eight times in a day, go from one crusade to another another one, go from program to another one, developing leaders, not having time to, to rest. For about five years, I wasn't even sleeping on the bed at night. I had to wake up in the night and pray from 12 midnight to, to 6 a.m. in the morning. And I had a lot of other uh, uh, things that I, I would say they were not healthy habits. I was eating poorly, I was sleeping poorly. I just, if I have to sleep, I just sleep like three hours in a day. So all of these things compounded, and before you know it, I started having high blood pressure. It was so, it was, it was so high that I had a heart attack. Not only that I had a heart attack, I actually, uh, I, I collapsed and died from the heart attack. I had died about five times. I had to come back to life just by the message of God. Medically, it is impossible for me to be alive because I've already hemorrhaged from my brain. And, uh, I, and once you've hemorrhaged from your brain and they are not able to contain it immediately, you can't leave. But when I was dying, when I died and when I was going, I had an encounter that Jesus appeared to me and he told me to go back. He took me and threw me back in my body. I was in a coma for some time, but I came back to life and I recovered from the stroke. If I don't tell you, you'll never know I had a stroke. If I don't tell you, you never know that I went through all of that. I also had a failed relationship that triggered the heart attack. But I thank God that today God helped me to overcome. I came this far by having complete trust and faith in God. I never would have succeeded. Everything was against me. My circumstances were against me. I don't have the right contact, you know, the right connections. Uh, unfortunately, my father was a very generous person, but the people that he brought up, none of them, was willing to contribute anything to our lives growing up. Another experience I would, I would actually have loved, I'd love to share is an experience uh, when I, I was living in, a, in, a, in an accommodation. I was paying just 12,000 Naira in that accommodation. And uh, uh, it, sometimes it was tough to pay. But at this particular time, it wasn't because I, I didn't pay the rent. It was that the, the landlord, who is an uncle of mine, wants to give their house to someone else who was willing to pay higher. And he didn't have the courage for him to tell me, please, either up your money or, or leave the place. And then uh, 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 he, he, I don't know if he was the one who sent the wife, but the wife who tend to be the one who is the, who is the strong one or who is the bold one, came to the house you know, this evening and said, why are you still living here? And I said, this is the house I rented. He said, we gave you a quick notice. Some time ago, I said, nobody, I don't, I, I don't have knowledge of that. I don't have a quick note. Nobody gave me a quick notice. And, and, she, and she insisted that an auntie of mine, who was actually a member of the church, gave me the quick notice. And I told her that she didn't give me any quick notice. Naturally, she would never have the boldness to give me a quick notice because I have contributed by the message of God a lot into her life. But this woman stood on that and she was harassing me, insulting me. She was hyperventilating, she was angry, she was raining invectives and curses and, and, and oh my, I kept quiet. Not a single word came out of my mouth. I, just, I was just watching her and allow her to do whatever she needed to do. I said she got, she got tired, she left. I left the matter with God because I knew that uh, if God had helped, then God would be able to do something. And to the glory of God, the second week of that incident, the following rather, God blessed me. And the second week of that incident, I moved out of the house. And the next, the next rent that I paid 
I paid a rent of, a, of half a million naira. Not only that I moved out of that house, God blessed me so much that most of the things I had in that house, I gave them all out, moved with new things into the next accommodation. A lot of things that worth several hundreds of thousands. God blessed me on every side. And I want you to know that in case you are going through such an experience, that is not the end of your journey. You need to have hope, you need to have faith. God will come through for you. And you need to also balance that with good relationship. Because the people that God used in helping me, the people that God has also used me to be a blessing to them. Just being there for them, just being kind to them, just praying for them when they needed prayers. Our viewers, my name is Honorable Ahiazua Johnson Agbonima. People call me EJ. That's my mission. We presented the good people of Ego, who got half of that conversation, we had this publication. And this is my story on AI. This is my story. 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 My brothers and sisters, this is my story. This is my story. Uncle, please tell us a story. In the locality, I become a local champion there that if they come to the shop, they didn't see me, nobody could make her hair. I want to be a lawyer in the future by the grace of God. During my own time from my story, I could be referred to as the house head in my house. I want to also say that difficult childhood, it may be able to influence the extent to which you go, but people have been able to overcome difficult childhood for them to become who they are today. Difficult childhood can be, uh, can be challenging, it can be traumatic sometimes, especially if, if you don't have the coping mechanism. But every human being ought to develop the tenacity of purpose that will be stronger than the, 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 the challenges that come with, 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 with upbringing. I, 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 I know that parents have the responsibility for them to put in their best into bringing up their, child, uh, their children rather. But I also realize that all hands are not equal. And if you're coming from a background where your parents are not able to do the best for you, uh, you shouldn't use it as an excuse for you to fail. It is only people who are determined to fail or who don't see life as, as, something, to, as something to conquer that are the ones who always look for excuses for them to fail. If you can be able to make the necessary effort, you can overcome anything in life. Uh, 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 there, are, there are a lot of people who had a lot of difficult childhood growing up and today they are renowned people. How about uh, Pastor Deboe of the of Redeem? He is one of the most accomplished men on earth today. Uh, reading his biography, uh, he, he said that he wore a shoe, a sandals precisely for the first time in his life when he was 18 years. He, he, he was, he, he, and, and as at that time, that was the first time also for him to be able to wear a trouser. And he said the first time they were able to afford an umbrella in the house, they had to kill uh, a chicken for them to celebrate it. He, he, it was tough. He went to the university during holidays and during his free time, he had to break firewood, he had to, he has to, he has to process food like Akbo and then do stuff like that and be able to uh, 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 sell before he goes to school. How about someone like the renowned surgeon uh, uh, Ben Carson? He had a very difficult childhood. The mother was one of the greatest influence in his life, but he was consistent. He believed when he was growing up that he was not going to make it in life because he thought he was so foolish, he was not intelligent. But the mother was able to make him, and the preacher that, uh, that, that he listened to was able to paint a picture of success to him. So, and so he was determined to be a missionary doctor. And today he has succeeded in that. He has broken records that nobody has been able to uh, nobody has been able to to to, to break or, or to be able to yes in his lifetime i believe that everybody can use the challenges in their past 
just like a rocket, to push them into the destiny that is ahead of them. I can't say that I'm lucky because life is not about luck. Life is about work. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not luck, it is work. You need to work, you need to work, work and work hard. I, 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 I had a destiny consciousness even as a child. By the age of, of eight, I was already preparing to release an album. I am a musician and I was saving money towards that. Thank God for the influence of my mom. My mom taught me how to save, how to tithe. She gave me, uh, she gave me two piggy banks. I, ha I had them under my bed. I would, I would put my tie to work, put my savings in the other one. I was planning to buy a guitar at that time. I had so much passion for music that I would construct my own. And uh, I started learning how to play the instrument early. And when my parents were, uh, were not even so, uh, I'll put it in, they were not very encouraging at first, I had to stick to it because it was a passion. But later they began to encourage me, especially my father, he was so helpful and very encouraging. At times when I organized a concert, my father, he was a very busy person, accomplished person. My father trained thousands of pastors and uh, he, he would leave his busy time, come to sit in my crusade, come to sit in my, in my, my concert just to encourage me. But at first it was tough. It, as, as far back as 1990, I would hire a guitar for five naira. Five naira was a lot of money. I was doing business. I was going to school doing business. I, 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 had, I had several ways of I was running a dry cleaning shop. It was a, it was a big school we were, Bible school, a Bible college. And those, those people, they didn't have time to do the, those things. And even though a lot of people thought that uh, as a lecturer's child, they're not supposed to do those things. But I humbled myself. I saw it as an opportunity, not as something for me to, to be ashamed of. I would clean up their clothes wash them, press them, deliver them, they will give you money, I will pub the, the students. I was a very young person. Looking back now, I realized that uh, it was that I was thinking ahead. I was just, I was just uh, uh, above my, my, above 10 years at that time, but I was doing all of these things so that I could accomplish a destiny. As at the age of 14, I had my first contract. They were building a, uh, an obstacle. And I went to the school and I told them I, I, I want to supply the blocks. They said, can you do that? I said, yes. I was going to supply the block. And uh, they, they, they gave me the opportunity. I supplied the block for the first obstacle, uh, or story building rather, that they built in that school. So I, I, I had this approach of working hard. And it has helped me so much. You need to be hardworking if you are going to succeed in life. You have to be diligent. If I have the opportunity for me to relieve my childhood, there are a few things I'd like to do differently. Number one is that I, will, I would have loved to rehearse more. I would have loved to focus more on developing my skill. I, I am good at what I do by the message of God. I'm a multi-talented person. I can do several things. I write songs. I've written hundreds of songs. I read songs. I develop choir. I, I train artists, I play, um, I'm a multi-instrumentalist, I play several instruments. But one of the things I realized was that uh, 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 some of the lessons you're supposed to learn when you're a child, some of the things, the skill you're supposed to master, the measurement you're supposed to master, if you, don't measure, if you don't master them at that age, it becomes almost impossible for you to master them after your brain has finished developing or when you have, yes, finished, your brain is already developed. When your brain is developing, it's, it's easier for you to master the skill set that's necessary for destiny. Number two, number two thing I would have loved to do differently is that I would have loved to take out more time to study mathematics. Because I realized that mathematics is something that you cannot, you cannot avoid in life. You need it at every, at every point in time. And, and uh, uh, if you don't give proper attention to, to, to mastering that when you are young, it becomes difficult for you to master when you grow older. And in life, you should also understand that uh, uh, the lessons you learn as a child, they become the product on which your destiny, or uh, yeah, on, your destiny is built on as an adult. And another thing I would have loved to also correct if I had the opportunity was that uh, there were times when I was a, 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 a I would call I, I was I was a truant. I I was practicing truancy in school. 
Uh, and uh, <laughs> sometimes uh, my parents will have things hard. They will pay our school fees on time. When you go home, they will drive you back to school. When you go to the school, they will drive you back to uh, uh, back, drive you back home. So sometimes you just hang around, and then before you know, you start hanging around with with bad boys who want to influence you. But thank God, I was able to make uh, decisions early in life that helped me to escape such people. Uh, as many of my mates today, they have broken lives. Some of them have been to prison. A lot of, a lot of them, they, have, they are addicted to, to, to smoking, addicted to alcohol. They have lives that are so disorganized. And if I had not made a good decision for me to pull away from that company on time, I would have ended up just like them or maybe struggling with some of these addictions currently. Uh, you need to be able to understand that in life, the people that you are allowed to influence you will determine how you're going to end up in life. Another thing I would have loved to also maybe correct it if I had the opportunity growing up is that, uh, again, to grow up again, is that I would have loved also to be, to be a more obedient child. Yes. The reason is because I realized looking back now that the lessons my parents were teaching me, it was all for my good. Uh, it, it, it was motivated by love, but sometimes it, look, it, looks, it looks hard and difficult when you are a child, but growing up, when you look back, you realize that these were the things that God has used also to make you into who He wants you to be. The government and the parents and people generally, they have a responsibility towards one another. The government should be able to, pro to provide an enabling environment for people to succeed and be able to maximally express their potential. One of the things I hate with the Nigerian setting is that people who are mediocre, they are always given opportunity for them to, to mount very important positions in life. And when you are an excellent person, you threaten them and they do everything to keep you under. And that's the reason why we have a society that's not working. Nigeria is a very great country. We have everything that every other country should desire. There's nothing that is necessary that we don't have in this country. But we have poor people management. We also have poor leadership. When leaders don't have a vision to be able to transform the society and transform the, life, the lives of the people, then those leaders, they become a burden to people. But there was something someone said recently that I love so much. He said that we don't have, we don't have bad leaders. We just have foolish followers. If you are, <laughs> if you, if, if we don't like our leaders, we should change them. But there's so much sentiment, religious sentiment, cultural sentiment, geographical sentiment that is just at work. And some of these things will allow them to play the important role in determining our polity and also our policies. And it has affected the development of Nigeria. We have leaders who are more interested in their pocket than in helping or serving the society. I need to use this opportunity to say that leadership is not an opportunity for you to enrich yourself. Leadership is an opportunity for you to serve other people. And if you are not willing to serve, you have no business being in leadership. And people look at leadership as, a, as, as the quickest way to make money. And that's the problem with Nigeria. We should be able to discourage in every way the fact that political leaders, they make so much money. They should be able to come to a place where they are driven only by the need for them to serve the people. So government should be people-oriented. Nigeria government does not have a people face. It, it, it has the face of a beast. So it, does, it, it, it lacks the compassion. It lacks, it lacks rather the necessary compassion the, than the ne and the necessary, uh, uh, how call it, uh, humanism that will help people to become better. When children are going through trouble, if, no matter how, how grown they are, your responsibility as a father and as a mother is to be able to encourage them and make them believe that they can succeed instead of giving them uh, 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 the, the, the kind of counsel that will make them feel as if they are failing. Because like some parents who just look at their children, instead of encouraging them to succeed, they will say very nasty things into their lives. And every one of us, we should be able to help other people to become what God wants them to be. You are mentoring somebody whether you like it or not. And you have a responsibility towards somebody whether you like it or not and we should be able to exert a positive influence help people we should be able to express the love of god as christians we believe that love is a central message but we hardly practice love forgiveness love goodness and kindness these are the central uh, uh, attitude or the central message 
of, a, of Christianity. And as Christians, we'll be able to practice that. If we are all helping one another, all loving one another, most of the challenges that we have in the society today, they will not be there. And this is my story. And that's it on my story today. For your comments and suggestions, please send a text or WhatsApp message to 0806 004 2843. Thank you for staying tuned.